Hey guys, Evan here. Just wanted to let you know that this podcast will be split up into two parts. So enjoy part one with Tony Rudolph from Tony's Lawn Care on YouTube. Sorry about that trouble here, Tony. No, I'm I'm sorry. I didn't I didn't tell you that I didn't have the didn't have a computer prepared. Like I run my whole channel and everything on this tablet. Like I don't even use, you know, like a a laptop or a desktop. I'm not a not tech savvy enough really to do that. <laughs> you were you were telling me that at the uh, expo. I'm like, how do you edit your YouTube videos and do your thing? You're just like, hey, it's just the GoPro and then my tablet. I'm like, hey, videos look yeah. great though. So we we did use uh, Zencaster from my uncle Greg for a, a couple episodes a few weeks ago, but he couldn't figure out how to get on it. But then he got on it. Hello, but this is Greg. It's kind of confusing. I think Zoom is a little bit more straightforward. Yeah, uh, Zoom allows you to connect from a lot of different sources too. So, like your phone or your tablet or whatever. Well, anyways, let's just let's just hop right into this. So, um, how are we going to start this one? Because like usually we just kind of have a whole bunch of banter, and then I go. Ben, <laughs> Evan, <laughs> Tony, <laughs> Tony, there we go. <laughs> so, yeah. No, no, I think, uh, I think we'll, we'll, it, you can introduce Tony and tell how, uh, how you connected with him. Then we want to get like background on how, how Tony got in the business and what's what this? he's doing on YouTube and all that stuff. Well, let's just hop into it. Everyone, what's going on? Uh, another, another day of lawn care in the books. Uh, just did a lot of leaves today. Yeah. Mulching up, sucking up. A lot of leaves, and we actually have a very special guest, um, Tony Rudolph, the Tony uh, Rudolph from Tony's Tony, Lawn Care. Tony's Lawn Care there on um, YouTube. So, Tony, what's uh, what's going on? Man, thank you so much, you guys, for having me on, and uh, it's it's an honor to be on here. I, I figure I didn't know, you know, if Evan would have time to record with me because <laughs> after his uh, after his videos going viral from the expo i thought maybe he bought a house down there next to donald trump or something down as, on the as, you know? that's probably probably where it was down there in uh, mar-a-lago i I'm really got a long way to catch though some of the uh viewership on your videos i think i saw like some six hundred thousand views on one or something i'll, I'll never get that i can tell you that <laughs> we're just so, you, so you didn't you didn't you didn't buy that house down by donald trump yet not yet. I, I think I'll probably do that in about 10 years and we'll have a uh, room for uh, Tony's lawn care. Hey, actually, Tony can take can uh, take care of my grass down there when I got the uh, house next to uh, Trump or, or just be on Mar-a-Lago, right? <laughs> yeah, make sure make sure you come out and yell at me as well. You know, like well, stall weed or whatever, you know. <laughs> well, technically, guys, Tony is a lot closer to Florida and Mar-a-Lago than we do. I mean, we're up here a little bit chilly and... Uh, Michigan today, and I'm sure you know Tony's down there in Georgia with uh, Paul Jameson. It's like it got got the 70s there right now. We're up here. It was low 50s today, and it's a little chilly. So this is the last nice week I think that we're going to have up here too. Yeah, basically so. it. But you know, I had started putting up YouTube videos, uh, lawn care stuff, and then Tony found our podcast on Stitcher. Next thing I know, I'm checking out the channel. I'm like, oh, this this guy is awesome. And I'm like, oh, he's but he's got you know good videos too, and he. he like viewership with Tony guys, people actually, huh, people actually engage with him though too. And he's got good relevant um, content. So I, Tony reached out to me. We met him at the expo and the, you know, rest was history. I was, uh, I was ashamed that he was married at the expo. I'm like, man, Tony's a, <laughs> Tony's a good guy. It's like, <laughs> so <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> he's like, he just hit end call. Well, that's all guys. See you later. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just so joking, like, yeah, it was, it was super cool to meet you. You know, we met, uh, or the, we seen you briefly in the back, back of the room at the opening, uh, keynote. And, uh, and you were like, yeah, you know, he's just, he must be just starting out. He's just telling jokes or whatever, but that turns out that that was the whole talk. And you didn't even tell the whole poop story last time. So you got to tell it, you got to tell it better. You want me to tell it from if my you know it, if you know it, tell it. Cause I, I still haven't heard it. Oh, if you know it, then go ahead. <laughs> so, so this guy, um, he was talking, you know, basically his whole talk was about like stories from his golf, uh, career or whatever. He's some kind of, he's some kind of famous golf guy or something. I don't even yeah. know who he is. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so he was telling the story about this one fellow player and they were out, uh, I guess they were out drinking the night before 
And uh, he was saying that he was a. <laughs> he's saying that the guy, the guy that the friend was, he said he was a conservative three X. Uh, so like, <laughs> and he he said he's like conservative three X. You know, like he's he really conservative got conservative three X. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got to kind of listen to him fast. But um, he was talking about how he was uh, you know, they're they're hung over and stuff, and they had to they had to catch this train. Um, and so he accidentally pooped his pants um <laughs> and there was uh there was someone there was someone that was selling like these jumpsuits that were made for the golf event you know like sweatpants sweatshirt that's what um, it was yeah <laughs> yeah and so the guy and they and they had to after they where that part was they had to get on a train remember and ride to where they actually were playing or whatever yeah um and so the guy since he uh pooped his clothes he bought one of these jumpsuits his friend um and then you know since he pooped in his other clothes when he was uh when he was when they were riding the train he threw the clothes that he had pooped in out the window of the uh, train because it was moving and then he didn't know and he just and he opened up he opened up what he had bought from the vent and it was just the sweatshirt just the top (laughs) (laughs) yep okay that's that's what it was so he was left with no pants and so the guy he like put his feet like in the arms or something and like rigged it up and he had to like walk out like, like that. <laughs> Which that was the highlight of Dave, uh, basically Dave, uh, David Faraday. Faraday's, um, I, I stayed for most of it. I didn't even like, cause Tony and his wife, like they were laughing, but then I, David was a little, a tad more rough around the edges and the, the, the language was a tad more coarse than I thought. And I'm like, yeah. he didn't really talk about lawn care or anything. It was just us laughing for a while. And then we all walked out like, well, okay, this is equipped. <laughs> just a poop story. So, <laughs> which, yeah, which so is uh, was, pretty um, funny. Yeah. Like, so it's not, that part is just like the opening keynote. It's not really necessarily meant to be like about lawn care. Um, last year we had the, the Navy Admiral James Stavridis where, which was super cool. He, he done oh, this wow. whole, like he done this whole um, presentation breakdown about like what's going to happen in 2034, I guess, like when the, so oh, parts of the nations like meet together or China and this other part where the battleships come together. And it was like a whole, like, you know, a, a 30, whatever it is, hour lecture about that. Um, and that Actually, was, that was interesting. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. He had pictures of all of it and um, kind of like guided us along about it, but I guess they just change it up every year and they definitely changed it up this year. And then <laughs> uh, the year before that, they had this guy, can't remember the guy's name but he's famous for like these uh submarines he was you know did these he huh. um he he like built and like trained and used these submarines where he'd be underwater for like multiple months um oh, wow. he's a famous guy too that was wow. the year before um and then they had this the james guy last year and then this year they had the golfer poop story guy so just- and, and, and and like evan said like we uh we ended up, we didn't even stay for the whole talk because it started, um, like his, his language, you know, I left out a lot of the bad, you know, obviously the bad language <laughs> and stuff, yep. but, um, but then he, then he started going into, you know, degrading stories about his wife and different stuff. Um, and so it's just starting to get a little unnecessary. So, uh, so we didn't stay the entire time. Plus we wanted to get in line for the doors to open. Oh, um, he has like a stampede. See, like, yeah. Yeah. Do you see or they crowd? crowd up right there and so um man so evan you know your first time at the expo is that pretty mind-blowing experience or what oh you know well i took some of tony's advice at the expo because i'm like hey i want to get some subscribers down here and meet people and so i'm like i'm gonna hit everything it was it was i was inundated because i I, the first day was all the mowers the the second day I, i did all the obscure things and the third day, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm going here. Yeah, I want to see Tony and, you know, the guys there. But I, I, it was just almost like I'm kind of tired. I'm like so I'm so worn out. You know, it's there's so much to do there. I, it's an action packed three days, but it really wears you out. I think I'm actually still trying to recover from the expo, even though that was like basically almost a month ago. Now. So, <laughs> but um, so did you, I, did you did you make it to some of the. Some of the small, smaller booths of stuff that's even for turf, there's a whole area like kind of on the backside of the hardscape area inside. 
And that's where a bunch of like the small booths are of even stuff that's not hardscaping. There's like a whole area of like these smaller booths over there where a lot of like, um, you know, a lot of the smaller booths will be over there. So you have to kind of walk through the hardscape area. There's a whole bunch more like these small booths. So did, did you make it over to that part or did you not get over there? Yeah, because I got my free Milwaukee shirt. Like you got two. And then I, I think it was past the Milwaukee. You keep going there and they had all what like they had this one hardscape machine where it can pick up like it was it's like on a crane or something you can pick up like a whole pound of bricks or like something like that but i tried to look for the smaller boost but it was really um it was really cool things over there though too i, I just yeah. didn't like it, it comes to a point where it's like i don't even know like where to go but it was it's just like okay just sit there watch don't t- try to take in too much just you know bit bit by bit so we'd have something to talk about but that literally is the biggest trade show for our industry hands down like yes. no question. So Ben, are you coming next year or what? Yeah, I think so. I think, uh, you know, I've seen the the videos and I kind of got excited about it. So uh, I think I got to go down next year. Um, but you had some great advice, Tony, for, for Evan. I think uh, you were the one that told him to try to get the videos up, you know, <laughs> as soon as possible. So I think that really helped you, Evan, to, you know, you were cranking them out the, the night that I, you, you filmed I took them. Tony's advice. He goes, Hey, get home and might be late and just stay up to like one or two a.m. editing. So I did that and, 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 and that wore me out, but, but that was actually fun too. Cause my, like, Oh, I got all, I got all this, um, get all this footage though, too. But you know, I, like, people actually watch it though, too. And some of the comments, people are just like debating about mowers. I just kind of just, just sit back and read them. Like, Oh wow, man, these, these some of these <laughs> guys are just animals on there. I'm like, Hey, I, they're like, how come you didn't go through the stinger booth? It's like, well, I'm from Michigan. We don't even uh, think what? have stinger mowers and some some people were like coming at me and like whatever and my favorite you know. was uh at the one booth where they had like the the arm wrestling thing because you know at some of these booths they have some fun they had stuff. like a world famous arm wrestler there for the uh, gravely on uh, aaron's booth i think so, so you have this arm wrestler on for like 45 seconds and some guy in the comments is like i can't believe you put the arm wrestler on when you have all that equipment around you <laughs> i'm like hey <laughs> i don't you use gravely or aaron but the next day i went to it and i got more of Gravely products. So you can't please everyone, but you know, the yeah. expo was rad and awesome. He was also, Tony, I don't know if you caught this. He was so focused on his videos that he didn't see Mr. Trace Adkins walking right by him on the video. Uh, on one of the- <laughs> yeah. It's like people were commenting with is that was the end of the second day, right? I or, think no, so. Or the first day, like, Oh, hey, Trace Adkins. I'm like, I had, I, I was oblivious. I had, I had no idea like, what was, what was even going on there. I was just kind of like, a giant space cadet for like three days. Oh, I'm going to go over here, go over there. So, <laughs> so yeah. you've, been, you've been three times, Tony, or have you been more than that to, to a quick Six times six. Okay. Man, wow. I got to catch up to you now with that. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I should have went, you know, I should have went back in 2015 when, okay. Brian's lawn maintenance. He really pushed it back in 2015 and 16. I just, I just didn't go because I think it was much smaller back then though, too. But I think equip. Tony could probably vouch. It really picked up steam the last probably two or three years. Yeah. I mean, it, it was big then though. It, it seemed pretty similar to how it is now. Even um, I went in 2016, I believe was my first year. Um, maybe 2015, but I think it was 2016. It was big, just like it is now. Um, you know, obviously uh, things change a lot year to year, but uh, it was a, it was a crazy show back then. And there's, there's always new stuff. Like if you go again next year, it will not be the same oh, like no. it is this year. Like the feel of it. There's different people. There's different products. You know, all the all that kind of stuff. So it's it changes. You know, every time. Even though it's sort of the same, but it's sort of not the same at the same time. So, would you say that this year was probably the biggest crowd? Because they, I think on record, they said twenty five thousand people were uh, showed up between the three days. I think it is. I think it might be the biggest crowd. Um, like I said, I don't, it, some years it has felt more packed than it was this year, but I think maybe they just organized it a little better and had a little bit oh, yeah. more space outside in like the first day you couldn't go outside before. So maybe people were crammed in a little more. So oh, man. It, it, it felt, it felt a little less cramped than normal this year, but I think they did have actually the biggest amount of people. So it was, it was really cool. It was really cool. Um, you know, I really don't know what else they could do to make it easier for us lawn guys to come. I mean, they pay for the parking, they 
paid for all kinds of food for you all the days. You know, you pay ten dollars for three days to ride whatever you want. Like, um, it's crazy. They they almost give the whole farm away to us long guys, pretty much. So that's that's even even still, I I saw an article that said they expected it to bring in like twenty million dollars to to Louisville for just that week. Um, with with all the people staying in the hotels and eating at the restaurants and things like that, that's yeah. insane. <laughs> Absolutely nuts. But um, weather was actually good down there. It was a shame it was so dry because the people were just treating the mowers. I mean, sure, I'm sure you saw it, Tony. They were just treating them like go karts. I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to demo any of this stuff because you're just ripping through them. Like, okay, so I'm like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Was there uh, any anything in particular that you saw, Tony, that you thought that's something I want or you know, something that just was a head turner for you? Well, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I want over there, but <laughs> that, uh, that what's, that's within reason, I guess. Yeah. I really, I always like looking at the box trucks. I really like those. Um, and also one thing is the, the, one of those, uh, one of those vans, they had a van set up with like this aluminum ramp, like a, um, I don't know. They're called like the ProMaster, the Ram ProMaster or something. They're, they're pretty common, you know, like I forget what, what kind of vans you like Amazon uses them. Like, you know, people. Oh, yeah, those. Those, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, the ones I'm talking about, it's just like a yep. less big, you know, it's not even a dually or anything like that. It's just a, I don't know. I almost get ton. one of those. Yeah. Like a Mercedes, like a Sprinter van, you know, Sprinter. Yeah. But they had the Dodge version there and that was super cool. It had a ramp going out the back and they had a mower and, I think it'd be super cool to have a setup like that where it's all like enclosed, but it's still, still not super big. Like, you know, a box truck is really big and you got to have a lot of DOT numbers and all that stuff. Whereas one of these vans, it could be neat because it could still be pretty easy to park and all that stuff, but it would, uh, you could have like a long care setup in there. It probably would not be good maybe for like, if you had a lot of employees, but, um, for a solo operation, man, I saw that van and saw like kind of how they had it sitting there. It was at like the, the Ram booth, I guess. And I was like, man, this is sweet. They had it set up I, in there. It was really cool. I think I saw that Johnny blades of grass. Um, he's got a setup with a Dodge Ram truck. It's pretty compact. I kind of wanted that. He, like he's got it looking really nice. He, he, you've seen Johnny's setup, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Which he has just like a ramp rack, you know, on, um ramp rack sport or whatever on his actual pickup truck um which is a great idea i mean they're i don't know two three four thousand bucks you can get one of those that goes in the re- in the receiver hitch and then okay you know it basically lengthens your bed about two feet dovetails down and has a gate um and it they'll have like rails that go up and stick in the state pockets that are already come in your truck oh. um but uh so that's what he has um, I'm talking about like an actual van, you know, setup, but, um, but the, the setup Johnny has is pretty sweet. And, um, I think, uh, do you know, there's a guy in Florida called, uh, Mo and go systems. I think he's the, he, uh, he sells them maybe like half as much as ramp rack. And he kind of invented that, that kind of setup in the ramp racks, kind of just like copying it and kind of making it their own. See ramp rack in the last few years, they're known for like a whole entire like new bed where you take the bed off the truck and you put the ramp rack on there. Like, oh, okay. That's, yeah. that's what they're really like when that, when that company came out for the first few years that like, that's what they do. But then now they, they make the ramp rack sport, which is just me, you know, basically this little extender that goes on your, you know, keep your bed on your truck. Um, and so they, they kind of copy the, the Mo and Go systems, a lot of people on YouTube that have been using them for years where it has like a trifold gate that goes up and it's super cool. Um, the only problem is, you know, for most wheel wells on pickup trucks, you're limited to a 48 inch mower, like, cause it has oh, to yeah. build between yep. the, the wheel wells, like if you're inside the truck. Um, so it would be cool to like get like the actual ramp rack where it, like you take the bed off the truck. Um, like, I think that would be cool. You know, like, and you could like put, you know, like, cause if you take the bed off the truck, then you can make it, it'll be wider, you know? Um, I think, but again, I don't even know. They didn't even have that type of version there. I don't think I'm trying to think, I, I think the, um, 
the ramp rack, you know, like the one they have now is called the sport or the one they had sitting out there outside. Um, and now that I, now that I think of it, the ramp rack, maybe they didn't ever, maybe they never had one where it was a complete bed build. Yeah. Um, I, maybe I it was always the- meant, uh, the ramp rack, like the, re- the regular ramp rack, I think, like I said, I think they're between two and 4,000, you know, somewhere oh, in that range. Um, but, uh, like, I think it would be cool, you know, if you're going to do that or if you want to run a wider mower is to like take the bed off the truck. Um, cause I even got a quote one time from, a the people, there's a, sure. a place about 20 minutes away where they build box trucks and stuff. Oh, there you go. They told me it'd be about 3,500. They could like build me a complete, you know, like a new, um, like take the bed off the truck, like you know, and build like its own, your own little landscape body on there. That's pretty then cool. You could, go, you, could, you could have a full, like seven and a half, you know, width, you know, on there, make it as wide as the cab, you know, and have, you know, oh, yeah. then it would be, it'd be basically like a mini little Isuzu truck, you know? Yeah. Um, those, those are awesome. Yeah. Uh, but you know, like, uh, they're not even the ramp rack setup. It's not the best for, uh, half ton pickup trucks. You know what I mean? Like you, uh, it's really yep. good to have a three quarter ton or bigger just to, because when you put that mower on there, your truck, you know, it'll be it just, sags just down. much weight really in the bed, in the bed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it is cool. And then, you know, like for me, I carry a lot of sticks and stuff. So that's also a little bit of problem, but um, like for that kind of setup, cause you know, you, you don't think about it, but when you have a truck and trailer, like, so you have the, the bed of the truck that you're able to use all that. And then you have also the whole length of the trailer. So you got, you're basically cutting in half like your usable, you know, cargo space. Um, but it is cool, you know, not pulling a trailer or any of that mess. Um, so I don't know. I do like that setup. If I could figure out a type of a mower, you know, that could work for that kind of setup, you know, it is something I would consider in the future, but I kind of really would like to have, like I said, like one of those, like a sprinter van set up because that way it would be inside. I like it to be in close. You know, just like you run the enclosed trailer, I ran an enclosed trailer for a lot of years. I like I like things being inside if possible. So I don't know, but I I had kind of wanted to do that. They had a kind of a, a truck next to I Suzu that was like the same, you know, it was they had a closed version of that truck, but it was a giant truck. It was like what an eight and a half and the the ramp was huge, but that truck cost a hundred thousand dollars. I'm sitting there. Yeah, no, I, I don't need this, but it'd be cool. But you want something that's, that's, you know, nice, well built and you unique, but this doesn't take up so much space. Cause you have to put it somewhere. Like that's the issue. Yeah. It's putting stuff somewhere, not to be an eyesore to your neighbors, which is the, right. <laughs> which I don't have a problem with that now, but um, you've got a sweet situation worked out right now. Oh yeah. So my neighbors are snowbirds. So they're like, go oh, just go ahead, park your trailer there all the time. They get a long driveway. So I just tuck it way back in there. Neighbors don't care that the, the street's narrow. So no one said a word yet until if, if anyone did, Oh, I, I would be furious. So and like, that'd be, Oh, I'd be so mad. <laughs> it's like, is, I mean, storage rates for stuff. It's, it's getting, I mean, when I was storing my trailer at a, uh, a unit and at a place I was paying like a hundred bucks a month, I'm like I got to save that money. You, you have to. So I just, proper ways to cut corners uh here in the uh lawn care industry right <laughs> but but still yeah. do work <laughs> so, so let's let's uh find out a little bit more though about, about tony's but how long have you had your your business tony well my dad started his business in 86 and okay. so oh, wow. um grew up doing it with him after school starting uh and i was homeschooled as well so i mean starting 12 13 14 i mean i was starting to go pretty full time, you know, even when we get into those years. Um, and then, uh, I started my actual company in 2011. Okay. Um, and the same then, time as you yep, 2010. Yeah. So it was, so I've never, I've never had any job besides lawn care landscape. I've never done anything else. Um, but that's good. So I don't, I don't know if I'm missing out on something else or not, but, uh, um, you're not, you're not, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so growing up, you know, doing it with my dad and then that was kind of always our plan to do it, uh, you know, to help me start my own business when I became adult. Um, and that's, you know, so we still, we still do things together. We still work together. My dad still has his business as well. 
I have okay. a younger brother too that, um, and he still works in my dad's company. He doesn't really want to like do his own company, which that's totally cool. You know, that's fine. Um, and so, and my dad, you know, so growing up, I've done a lot of different things with him. He, you know, he does, uh, lot clearing and build seawalls and, oh, wow. you know, pours, uh, you know, sidewalks, pours driveways, um, you know, irrigation, you know, so I've done it all. I've done all the hardscaping work. I've done lots of sod, you know, I've done a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, you know, he's got a skid steer and he's got another, oh, uh, those are, those are really nice. Too. Um, and so he does, he has a lawn route as well, but he kind of, he does some lawns and he kind of likes to do these other, you know, random, you know, projects for people, which that's, that's totally cool. You know, and he can also, you know, make some good money on those type of projects as well. Cut down, he cuts down trees. Um, like he, my dad, when I was a kid, like he used to climb and the whole deal. Uh, oh, wow. He doesn't really climb as much anymore. Um, I think he's 55. Well, Evan, you met him. He was there. He was there oh, yeah. at, at, the, at the dinner. Um, and uh, he, uh, you know, growing Godly up. Godly men. He, yeah. And, um, and he actually... So when my younger brother was like, I think two and I was like five ish, um, he, he slipped off of a roof with a backpack blower on, oh uh, boy, cleaning off oh, the roof. It was kind of a, it was one of them, they don't even have those roofs anymore, but it was like, uh, maybe Evan, you would know this, maybe Ben, you had seen this. It was like a slate. It was like a slate roof. It was made out of slate. Oh, um, goodness. And it was- had. It, it was, it was interesting. They don't even have those anymore, but anyway, he, he slipped off there, you know, you know, cleaning gutters, you know, um, and he came down, uh, and he landed kind of like in the sitting position, you know what I mean? With a backpack blower on. And so he broke his back. Oh, um, wow. This was 96, 97, somewhere in there. Um, but thankfully, you know, because there's not nowadays, there's probably some stuff you do, but even back then, there's not a whole lot, you know, they could really do to help. You kind of just have to hope that your, you know, your core is good and that it can kind of wait it out. And so thankfully my dad growing up, like he's a third, fourth degree black belt. He taught a karate school, like for my whole life, good portion of my life. So, um, you know, in that time, like, you know, his core strength was super good. I mean, he's still in great shape now, but um, but thankfully, you know, during that time he was, you know, still active and all that stuff. And so he's able to heal back up. And, um, some of his younger brothers helped to, uh, continue to run his company, even like three and four days after that happened, he was just like driving the truck and he had to like show them what to do. Um, cause he was, he was not, you know, he was only a few years into business. Then me and my brother were little and, you know, he had to do it. He had to keep going. Um, and so that's, that's kind of how he started. And I so how I can my first yard that I cut was was I was eight years old uh, with a 1996 uh, Toro Proline T bar belt drive walk behind you know wow 40, there we 40. go baby <laughs> um, yeah so like you know we didn't have zero turns or anything you know back then um, and uh, he actually just gave that mower to one of his employees you know that. Uh, does a few yards on the side. He just gave it to him as a gift, like this year. Like he still has it. It's still um, running. 90, yeah, ninety six. It's one of them, has one of them old school, like you know, single cylinder, you know, Kawasaki engines from back in the day. Um, actually, more reliable than you know the new engines that we have now. You know, <laughs> probably are. But you're, yeah, you're preaching the choir with that. Some of the stuff, I'm like, well, it blew up. Oh, it's only good for about fifteen hundred hours and blows up. Oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, I got this one for twenty six years and it's still working. <laughs> it's like a boat. It's like being well, a boat I mean, owner. The last, the last probably fifteen plus years, he didn't, he didn't use that mower every day. But that was kind of, that was like his first. It was a demo unit, but that was the first mower they ever got that was like new. Um, before that, you know, he had just like anyone, you know, he had push mowers and used lawn tractors and you know just, um, you know, all the the crappy equipment that you know. people start out with yeah uh, uh, and and so it's kind of a turning point when it's fundamentally you know he's kept, he held on to it for this whole time um until very recently but that's how i started eight years old i cut with that mower because we were still using that mower a lot you know pretty much as our main mower back then 
Um, but you know, I had no pattern or anything. We just, you know, I just went every direction around on this yard. Um, and, uh, so that's how I started mowing and, um, you know, started here and there as I got, you know, slightly older going out with them and doing a couple hours, you know, obviously, um, as most kids, I did not enjoy working with him, you know, at the time, <laughs> I know um, that. but yeah. And he, he told me, he's like, well, you know, as you get older, you, you will appreciate it one day. And I, and I, in my mind, I'm thinking that's not true. You're stupid. Right. Um, and then, uh, but, you know, think, you know, sure enough, you know, as I was 15, 16 years old, as I was starting to drive a truck and run a route for him and stuff, um, I really started to enjoy lawn care and get into all the techniques and doing all the stuff. And so I basically ran one of his crews, basically like me and another guy, like I would drive my truck and with his mowers and stuff, did that for a lot of years hmm. um, and did like a whole route for him up until you know, I started my business and then I would still work for him, you know, eat, uh, you know, like five days a week, then four days, then three days, like every year I would take off like one day. And then, um, I guess, you know, a few years ago when my younger brother got married and he wanted to take on more responsibility, you know, make more money, all that stuff. My dad was like, you need to just go ahead and do yours all the time. And, you know, he's going to let my brother take on, you know, shoulder more of the responsibility. Um, so that's what we did. So, you know, 2011, 2012, you know, really started ramping up. I got married in 2012. Um, so that's, I started my business, you know, sometime around when me and my wife were dating during the, during the dating oh, wow. um, period. And, um, and it's, it's been a crazy journey, you know, like I've had all those super bad customers, just like everyone does. When they <laughs> yep. We got out. customer stories. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you know, you said I've got an old guy that would come out and he would like move. He had like, he was on like this electric, you know, little wheelchair and he would, uh, like scooter, you know, I'm talking about little yeah, scooters yeah. that people have, I guess they're called scooters, you know, like a little basket on the front seat, like they have at Walmart and stuff. Yeah. You know? And, um, and he would like drive to like each section of the yard and like watch me do like every like weed pulling and like, he would just like, Oh man, I got rid right of him in the spot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He would like over to get out of there, <laughs> um, you know, and I was, I would like, you know, build these bird houses for him, you know, just all these random things like D weed is garden. And, um, man, I, I spent two, three, sometimes four hours on his lawn. And he, I think he was my first customer that I got from my own business. And that was, it was really tough. Cause you know, I didn't just like everyone else. I didn't have a mower. I didn't, um, you know, I had the truck because Ever since I got my driver's license, I basically, because I work my, with my dad, like that's just always our understanding that, hey, you know, whatever vehicle I have, it's a pickup truck like that. Like I've never owned a car, even if I wanted to, like, no, like I have to buy a pickup truck. So if I want to work with my dad, like that's the deal. I own a pickup truck, right? So um, still to this day, I still never have owned a car. I've only had, you know, trucks um, my whole life. So I had the truck. Um, which, you know, was an old used truck, but, um, but I didn't have any equipment. And so, um, you know, s starting, you know, a couple lawns, me and my wife would pass out business cards. I picked up one or two others on, and I would just do them on the weekends because I was still working my dad's company the you other know, five days a week. Um, and I save up, uh, $1,200 and I bought a, uh, a 48 inch, a Toro belt drive walk behind a T-bar. This is a newer one though. This is probably... I think it was a 2010 model. So it looked a little, little different than my dad's old one. Um, but I saw it on Craigslist and drove like an hour and a half or something, went and bought the, bought the mower. Um, and, and that's, that's how I started my business. And I was borrowing one of my dad's trailers and then saved up some more money, bought, bought a trailer that a friend of my dad's was selling. I think I paid, I don't know, $1,200 for that or something. Um, and that's how I started my business. And then just one yard at a time from the, you know, from there. And, um, and it's great because now, you know, I'm at the point where I'm doing really well and, um, I don't owe any money on my business, all my trucks and equipment's paid for. Nice. Um, and we're, me and my wife are working hard. I only, we only owe about 36,000 left on my house. Um, oh, wow. and it's, yeah, and it's, that's it's awesome. worth like, it's worth in somewhere in the two hundreds. So, okay. oh, good, um, dude, that's great. Really, really trying to pay that down. Since we have no other bills, you know, the the mortgage is the only thing that we have. So we're trying to 
do everything that we can to pay this down, which I mean, we've already lived here like six years or something. So we, I would have liked to even pay it down faster than we are, but you know, it's just, you know how life is. We have, and we also, so 2017, um, our first son was born, which Evan, you met both my kids. So awesome. 2017, uh, river is born. And then the year of 2020, my daughter Willow was born and that was a, crazy experience like because i had to go through like if i went when the baby is born if i had to like go down to the car to get one thing for my wife um i had to go through like a five-step process for them to even let me back into the hospital and um <laughs> you know zero zero relatives pastors nobody you know for the second kid um 2017 you know it was, it was cool you know everything was pretty wide open but yeah obviously 2020 like it was it was crazy and so it's been a journey it's been a definitely been a journey um and i you know i've had em employees uh, you know one or two here or there um but i've really tried to keep it small on purpose um because over the years i've seen my dad have you know take his company and be really big and then now he, he has it really small again um you know, at some points, you know, he had 20 guys working for him and, you know, just all the stuff. Um, but then that, you know, seeing seeing the problems that he went through, because I was there firsthand working in his <laughs> running one of his trucks. Like, it's like, wow, you know, I don't know if I even want to go to that point. And so I've kept it small. And as I get older, you know, I probably will, you know, hire someone to help me or whatever. But I don't know that I ever want to bring it to where, you know, I'm like completely out of the field and have trucks run around. So I don't know if I ever want to do that. Um, um, you know, all the properties are basically in two neighborhoods now that I do. Oh, good. And they're all every, every week, uh, 12 months a year. Um, you know, I get wow. paid 12 months a year. Um, but I mean, there's, but there's, there's work to do here. 12 months a year. We have no snow or anything like that. So um, <laughs> you're in, you're in Buckhead, Buckhead, right? Well, I'm in, I'm in the actual town of Buckhead, Georgia. So I'm not, I'm not in the, the suburb North of Atlanta. I'm actually, um, I'm 45 minutes South of, uh, like where the Georgia Bulldogs are. It's a pretty popular thing. Like Athens. Oh, there we go. Uh, okay. The college. Yeah. The college team, it's a big deal. It's still a big, it's a big deal even where I live. So I'm 45 minutes south of that. So I'm kind of, kind of between Atlanta and Augusta, if that makes sense. So I could go okay. an hour, an hour I could go to Augusta, like where the Masters and stuff is, or I could go an hour the other way and go to Atlanta. Um, or I could go north, you know, I could go east to go to Augusta. I could go west to go to Atlanta. I could go north to go to Athens. Um, so yeah, where Paul Jameson, Paul Jameson lives about maybe, uh, close to two hours away from me because he's oh, north of Atlanta. Okay, I'm I'm east of Atlanta. He's north of Atlanta, so I have to go to Atlanta and then go up, you know, to get where he's at. Um, and so that's where we are. So, but I mean, it, that's not you guys' fault. You, it, I mean, I technically I live in like the the town is actually called Buckhead, you know, like where I live. But there's like there's no stoplight or anything in the actual <laughs> little town where I live. So, okay, um, so they have a. They have the Go town ahead. Buckhead, and then that they do have that area in North Atlanta called Buckhead as well, right? Yeah, yes. Oh, wow. that's, okay. yeah, that's a uh, the but you know most people think of that Buckhead because that's like a like you're saying it's it's a suburb of Atlanta and it is crazy. It's a huge area, millions of people. Yeah, um, I don't know if the actual town is like I don't know if the official zip code and actual name is Buckhead. People just know it as Buckhead, right? So, um, so like. I live in the actual town of Buckhead, which doesn't mean anything really, except for, you know, just, and actually that town might actually be called Buckhead, but I live in Buckhead 30625 zip code. Okay. So, um, well, so Lake closer Oconee, to Athens. Yes. Yeah. I'm South of Athens. Yeah. I can get to Athens about 45 minutes. So I'm not too far from there. Real we quick. actually live at Lake, Lake Oconee is really the area that we live. There's a, a Ritz Carlton that's on the lake here. Um, so a lot of like famous people and stuff have houses here uh and that's it's good it's good for business there's a you know the neighborhoods i work in are gated neighborhoods and they they actually have a computer chip in my truck so they know they know when i enter the neighborhood and when i leave the neighborhood and, and all that stuff so 